The ISA 315 update to the audit templates has required enhancement in the areas of risk assessment and the design and implementation of controls. This video will be looking at the design and implementation of controls process. Now, as before, when you're going through a planning stage, you will be considering risks and you'll be considering potentially controls that the, uh, that the entity has in place to mitigate those risks. Again, as you go through the, the work, you can raise a new control at any time. And you can select the various uh, financial statement areas they relate to. Okay, this can be drilled down at um, trial balance level. And again, the assertions to which that risk may will be mitigating. You can identify what type of uh, risk this is, entity IT or financial statement risk. You can also link it directly to individual risks that have been identified. You'll also record the, the frequency of that risk, the type of risk, and uh, various other elements. There is a summary control report which will record these risks for us. And again, these can be edited to a, a greater or, or lesser extent on here. Now, if you are going to use those risks to mitigate, the, sorry, use those controls to mitigate the risks. So then we want to, if you're going to review, review the design and implementation of the controls, we go to our new B24 form. And by selecting the, the drop down, we can consider each of those individual controls it, by itself. Again, this is a summary form for this control review, but an individual document has now been created where you will record your detail relating to that control and whether you are going to use it and assess the implementation of it. So data that has already been selected and, and picked up from the control as it was raised is recorded in here. It's recorded that it's a direct control. We've got it manual, daily. These are the things we've already recorded. At this point, you will then look to the evaluation of the design. You're going to assess, is that control designed effectively? You can write, obviously, get your conclusion, yes or no, and write your understanding of the control in here. We'll then determine whether that control has been implemented correctly by the entity. And again, your test, you will record uh, whether that has been implemented. Only then will you then test the operating effectiveness of it. This will be carried out uh, elsewhere. And if there has been a test of operating effectiveness, you can say where that was carried out. If there are any control deficiencies, you can record those here as well and the, the impact of those on any further audit procedures. As I said, there'll be one of these created for each of the controls that you wish to assess. By returning to the um, assessment screen, you'll see this information has been filled out here, whether you are implementing it or not. 
There is also uh, an assessment of controls at the envir IT environment level, if any of those have been written, and then you'll do your basic conclusions on the controls and any deficiencies.